Okay, then let's have a look at question eight, chapter three, mixed exercise stats and mechanics book year one. Okay, question eight um, from the large data set, we've got information of da daily wind speed. Okay, and the histogram is drawn. Give reasons to support the use of a histogram for this data. So, if we have a quick look at the data. We go from 10 to 15, and then 15, 18, 20, 15, 18, 20, 25, 30. all of these out all the time but anyway 25 30 and 50 okay and that is g knots and this one is the frequency and we have 399920 399920 um, okay and they say give a reason to support the use of your histogram to represent this data well uh, the class widths class widths are quite different are all different so a histogram makes sense Okay, we've also got um, continuous continuous data for G, i.e. knots. Okay, and so generally you do bar charts with discrete data and you do histograms with um, continuous data. Okay, calculate the width and height of 18 to 20. So we want to look this one here. Now we're told as well that the histogram draws the bar from 10 to 15. This one here has a width of 2.5 centimeters. We have a height of 1.8 centimeters. Now, 2.5 times 1.8. Where are we at here? Oh. Um, 2.5 times 1.8 gives us 4.5. Okay, which isn't the frequency of three. Okay, and so we would then have to also divide by 1.5 okay and that gives you three so we need to have a width and a height that works from there so the class width okay for these is five six and eight three two what's that one twenty and five 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 Okay, now because this is a class width of 5 and it's a width of 2.5, we can see that they have half the class width. So the class width on this one is going to be 1 centimeter. Now, then what's the height going to be? Because we're going to need 1 times something for the height, dividing it by 1.5 will give us the answer 9. Okay. So taking your 9, multiplying it by 1.5, okay, gives us 13.5, okay, don't need to worry about the times 1. So 13.5 in there, so our height is going to be 13.5 centimetres. So just a bit of reverse engineering on it, 
Okay, so that was A, B, wide one centimeter, height. 13.5 centimeters. Okay. Um, use your calculator to estimate the mean and standard deviation of the gusts. Okay. Let's get my calculator. Let's see what we can do here. I'm afraid you're going to have to have me come out big. Hello there. Okay. On your calculator here, we're going to go into where is it now? Menu. Okay, and across to tables, which I think is where is no, it's not tables. I want I want statistics. I want statistics down there. Number five. No, number six. Okay. Got these choices of one variable. That's what we want to choose. One variable. Okay. And hopefully you have your calculator already set up that it will take an X and a frequency. Okay. Um, so your X values and your frequency. The X values are going to be the midpoints of these. Okay. So we're going to have to half the class width and add them on. We're going to have to half the class width and add them on to here, okay, to there, and then the frequencies are obviously these, okay, so let's see if we can do that, so that first one there is going to be half of that, is going to be 12.5 and 3, I'm just going to go down, so 12.5 there for the first one, and we're just going to go down and put them all in, so 15.8, 15, 16, 17, 18, 16. Um, midpoint of 18 to 20 is 19, midpoint of 20 to 25 is 22.5, uh, 25 to 30 is 27.5, and 30 to 50 is 40. So I'm going to put them all in there. Now I'm going to come across to the frequency side of my table and just put in my 3, 9, 29 and 7. So hopefully you can see them all there now. Coming up there. Okay, can you see that? Yeah, just about. Alright, so with all of that in, we are then going to press options. And we're going to choose number 3, the one variable calculations. Okay, so number three, and it comes up with all of that. And hopefully, you can see there that the x bar on the very top line is 23.41, and standard deviation is 7.321, second last line. Okay, so there we are, done. Get rid of my big head. And write that in A, B, C. Right, so the mean was 23.4, 3.41. Uh, what are we working in here? Knots. And uh, standard deviation was 7.32. Okay, and that is well is in knots. Okay, um, just trying to think if your calculator doesn't have the frequency. Let me just see if I can remember how to do this. Um, Statistics is it under? Yes. Okay, so if you don't have the frequency bit of your calculator, what you can do 
from here onto the calculator, you can go into Shift and Setup. And then when you come down, so this is normally where you go for changing your angles and stuff to regular disease, uh, degrees. When you come down, you get statistics there. Okay, number three. Number three. And it says frequency. And you can then press number one to turn it on. That's it. That would give you the frequency column. If you're not using it, just leave it as once. Turn it on once. Leave it there forever. Right then, part D. Part D. Use linear interpretation to find an estimate of the number of days the maximum gust was within one standard deviation of the mean. Okay. So we are looking for 23.41 plus 7.321. And we are looking for 23.41 minus 7.321, so that we are within one standard deviation of the mean. So 23.41 plus 7.321 is 30.731, and 23.41 minus 7.321. Is sixteen point zero eight nine. So coming back up here, thirty point seven and sixteen point zero eight. Thirty point oh seven. We're going to have some of them in here. Okay. And there for your thirty point. What was it again? Seven three. Might not even catch one in there, and the other value was 16.089. 16.089 is in here somewhere. So we need to do a bit of interp interpretation to work out where that is and what is in it. Okay, we definitely will have these nine people, these 20 people, or these days, I think it is, and these nine. In it, and then we've just got to see how many of these nine are in it, how many of these seven are in it. Okay, so let's start on the higher end there. So the higher end says that it is 30 greater than, less than G, less than 50, and there are um, seven people for the frequency. Okay, so. 50 take away 30 is equal to 20 because we're on the greater than less and we don't need to do bounds. Okay, and then 20 divided by 7 is 2 point something. Two point eight, And so we can now start sharing it in terms of 30 plus 2.8 is obviously 32. Eight. That's when the first person will lie, so we don't get any of those seven people in there. Okay, so we have zero from that group. Okay, now looking at the next group, which was the eight, 15 to 18 with three people in it. 15 to 18, which was the 15. Three people in it, and we're looking for this 16. It's the same idea again. 18 minus 15 is equal to 3 divided. 3 divided by 3 is obviously 1, and so we are going to have some. We are going to have a person at 16, 17, and 18. So, since we've got to be within that. They are smaller than it. Those two people will be inside the group as we get down. This person is too small by 0.089. Okay, not person day, isn't it? Okay, so we've got two coming from that group. Okay, so we get 
two way to that. So just coming back up here, we said we're going to get. Oh, my apologies. I've done class width of three when it's a class width of nine. Um, divided by nine. So let's just quickly change that around. It's because I had class widths, not frequencies, in there. So that should be nine divided by nine. Okay, which is equal to a third. And so we're going to have 15 and a third. 15 and two thirds, 16, 16 and two thirds, uh, one third even. Okay, um, so one, two, three people do not make the cut, meaning that there are six people coming out of this group. So just coming up here, we're going to have the six from this group, the nine from here, plus the 20, plus the nine, and we didn't have any from the last group. Okay, six, nine, 29. is 44 days were within one standard deviation of the mean. Okay, question nine, any challenge to go on this exercise? 